Ja, das Gleiche passiert mir natürlich mal, die für mich auch schwierig auszusprechen sind. Und ich versuche es nochmal. Uh, The same happens to me too, because some uh, names are difficult for me to pronounce as well. I'll try it again. Princess Apte Jigma, Linda Davis, uh, my colleague Maya Flaxbart, ladies and gentlemen. Well, the urgency to act. I think there's no question about it, but I'd briefly like to exemplify it again. Worldwide, we have extreme weather events. Maybe you remember the images of Cyclone Aida, the pictures from Mozambique. We remember the cold spell in the US and Canada. You remember pictures of forest fires in California and the droughts in East and West Africa, and even Germany was not spared. We had a rather dry summer last year, and therefore we had crop failures in agriculture. So that shows how important it is, this issue. The World Meteorological Organization said for many years in a row, this is the hottest year on record, 2015 to 2018. And never before has the uh, sea level risen as much as last year. It rose by 3.7 millimeters. It doesn't sound like much, but it shows that the situation is exacerbating and is speeding up. And I just don't just want to refer to the urgency, but I also want to say that even if um, temperature levels rise by only one degree Celsius, we already see change that causes disasters and natural disasters and has an effect on agriculture, etc. It's a human tragedy as well, not just a material one. So we need to act now. I think that means also that no matter where we are, we are responsible for an economic, ecological, and um, societal development, social development. And that means that we need to lower our greenhouse, greenhouse gas emissions so that we can limit the effects of climate change. What can we do to limit the temperature increase. So, well, it's about climate change mitigation. We need to have a global energy transition. And that means that we need to expand renewable energies. And at the same time, we need to increase our energy efficiency. Two thirds of all greenhouse gas emissions are generated by energy generation or by energy use. And one third alone is created through um, energy generation by fossil energy. I held many um, talks recently in recent months and weeks, and it became clear that we need to sort of limit global warming to 2% or preferably 1.5% and that we're probably not going to achieve that. And among experts, it's therefore important to talk about it again, to reiterate that if we continue as before, we will have, we will have to expect um, an increase of three degrees Celsius with all the consequences that we'll have. So, a few years ago, we thought, well, we can probably emit fewer greenhouse gases. But last year, the greenhouse gases, gas emissions rose to 33 gigatons, mainly as a result of increased use of oil, gas, and coal. The increase of coal-fired so coal power generation is a reason for that global um, power generation with coal. In China and India, people are reducing their plans to expand uh, coal-fired power generation, but other countries are uh, planning new plan 
conflicts in this area, for example, Indonesia, Vietnam, and Turkey, but also in Japan. So we need to think more about um, coal-fired power generation, and I think it's a good sign that my minister, who is at the clim uh, climate cabinet at the moment, that she is thinking about this, and we're thinking about joining the Powering Pass Coal Alliance. Those are things that we now need to implement and to get to business, to get to that business that the previous speaker mentioned. We need to triple the investments in energy efficiency and we need to double investments in the expansion, expansion of renewables. What are we doing in Germany? Of course, well, in theory, you can philosophize about what we have to do. And I think the majority is of the same opinion, but at the same time, we need to act. In this coalition, we established a commission. It's called Growth, Structural Change and Employment. Well, it's known as the Coal Commission and um, business, industry, environmental associations, trade unions, regions, and academia are represented in this commission. And it was a historical step that this commission managed to um, submit a uniform, or, or unanimous recommendation to us, telling us to stop coal-fired power generation and to develop structures further in the region. That means that the power plant capacities must be decommissioned until 2022 by 25% and, another, um, and by 60% until 2030 with baseline 2017. So at the moment, still a quarter of our greenhouse gas emissions still come from coal power plants and the 4.5 reduction is also due to the decommissioning. But we have to work with the regions. There needs to be, um, it's a difficult transition because it needs to be equitable, it needs to be fair. And I think we can lead as an example here. And I think we'd be well advised to connect ourselves with others and to have a global network of like-minded countries. Let me get, get to climate change mitigation and our action program for 2030. We need to achieve the um, sustainable development goals by 2030. We have uh, committed to that and we also have a European reduction target and we're enshrining that in national legislation. The 2015 agreement together with the Sustainable Development Goals and others was the starting point for a global sustainable development. And I think it shows social, ecological, and uh, economic. That's what this progress must be. Many people and many countries have put all their hopes in that, and I think that's important, especially for stabilization in the individual countries. We must not um, um, disappoint this trust. In Europe, we have a emission trading scheme, a carbon pricing, and I think the reform showed that we can strengthen this trading. The price of the certificate has tripled, and I'm convinced that by reforming emission trading in Europe, we have actually strengthened this scheme and put sustainable long-term incentives for sustainable development, sustainable industries. The shortage prices at the beginning of the next trading period um, are expected and they are incentivizing emission reductions. Of course, we also need to look at other areas like the heat area, uh, heat 
market, etc., and use renewable energies there. One key topic at that is also one key topic here at this dialogue. My minister Svenja Schulze um, brought carbon pricing on the table and she has developed a concept and there are two criteria for success. One is that carbon pricing must put effective incentives and the distributional effects also need to be considered and need to be shaped in a smart way. So it's not about forcing CO2 reduction or generating additional income for state coffers, but we need a kind of incenti an incentive that is socially just. Exactly how we do that, how we redistribute the revenues of carbon pricing, that's something that's being discussed with many different options available. And my ministry is working on a concept on how such a carbon pricing concept can be climate effective and socially just at the same time. So we need to bring these two aspects together in order to ensure acceptance in society. And we need to have the support from society, especially young people don't want to wait any longer. Young people want us to act now. A couple of words about the European climate policy. This year, we will think about the long-term strategy beyond 2030 with its vision and comprehensive analysis for climate neutral economy the european commission showed that a transition to greenhouse gas neutrality is not only technically feasible but also a, an a, economic advantage to do that until 2050 and in the last few years the whole climate and energy legislation has been reformed until 2030, we will now have a, a comprehensive legal framework that will regulate how many greenhouse gas emissions there may be per year or may be emitted per year. The climate regulation allocates these emission reduction targets to the individual EU member states on the basis of per capita GDP. And I hope that by the end of the year, all member states will be ready to will be ready so that we can finalize national energy and climate plans. The binding requirements at EU level correspond mostly to our national targets. In 2020, we will not hit our target in Germany in terms of ETS as well. That means that we need to buy additional certificates. But what I want to say is that you invest beforehand in renewable energies, in sustainable energy. I think that makes more economic sense than paying for certificates later on. Especially Germany, with its innovative power, has a special responsibility for decarbonization of the energy system. And we're not just looking at the expansion of renewable um, energies, but also by increasing efficiencies, but having better solutions for more flexibility, optimized networks, and power to X uh, technologies, um, storage technologies as well. I think we need more, uh, a more, well, we need to have more speed in order to achieve all our targets and uh, yeah, make more progress here. Of course, there are also areas where it's going to be a little bit more difficult. I'm thinking about special industrial areas where we also want to provide support. And that's why we have also established a program to support industry. It's important that renewable energy, transport, industry, that we look at the different sectors and see how we can link them up with each other and how we can advance sector coupling. In order for all of this to be successful, and let me come back to what happens if we're not successful, what effects will that have? 
it will not only impact on the sea level and extreme weather events. It has something to do with peace, with justice, and that's what young people are asking for. The Fridays for Future movement comes at the right time to show us adults to act, to be courageous, to move ahead, and I think we need to pick up on that. The role of industrial country, industrialized countries is pretty clear, and I'm sure that with dialogues such as this, with the Berlin Energy Transition Dialogue, we can make progress, and I'm very happy that you are all committed and dedicated to achieving the climate goals 2030 and 2050, to working together and uh, making sure that the world will be a better place. Thank you.